well, we all knew this was coming. In the back of my mind, I was just hoping this wouldn't happen. I was thinking maybe, you know, he can do a couple of one-off races and call it a career. But today, uh, August 26th, Kurt has a press conference, announces his retirement. He says that his uh, doctor and himself kind of agreed that his body just simply cannot get to 100% to run at the cup level, and he decided to call it a career. And it's really, really depressing. Um, to really understate it, or to really explain why this bothers me so much, one, I like Kurt. Me, I guess to give a backstory in the context behind it, why I like Kurt so much, we'll kind of have to start at the beginning. So, let me, let me, let, let's start with that as I fix my face games. I don't know why I look so blue, but it's almost fitting that it looks blue. It's a, it's a metaphor for my, my mood right now. So... Kurt, basically, for a long time, was the third most hated athlete in America. And he was despised, he had a shit attitude, and he got infamously got into a Jimmy Spencer, even though I my take on that situation is Kurt was mostly innocent for basically all of it. It all started at Phoenix in 2001 where Spencer ran him over, and then Kurt got him back at Bristol in 2002. And then Spencer decided, hey, I'm going to retaliate and dump him going 200 miles an hour into uh, turn three at Indianapolis, which is ridiculous. And Spencer still has the same grudge, same, like, just angry uh, angst towards him all these years later. Um, and just a bitch boy. And Kurt basically surpassed Spencer in all stats in just two years of his cup career than Spencer's entire career. So that, that was funny. Um, after that... Um, he, he won a championship. Not too long after, he wins a championship. And Kurt is kind of a classic case of where do you, you know, what do you do? Where do you go from here? Um, even though my opinion on his championship, again, he just, again, it's, I'm not hating him. I'm hating the format. I don't think he was the best driver all year. I think he was like fourth best all year. If you go on racing reference, look at full season points. Gordon was the best. Um, Kurt had a solid year, but I don't think it was a championship caliber season. But that this is reality, and sometimes reality sucks where the best driver doesn't always win a championship. And 2004 was the first of many examples of that. But even though had he won a championship or never won one, I still think the way or his career went, I think, is a championship caliber driver and one that should be deserved a bunch of respect. And But Kerr is a case of when you win a championship in your fifth year of your career, where do you go from there? And it kind of went downhill. 2005 wasn't nearly as good in terms of performance. He got about the same amount of wins, but he was dipping in performance. And then infamously, he is let go of his uh, Roush ride because DUI charges. Um, being alive at this time period, watching NASCAR week to week, I remember when this happened and me hating Kurt Busch. I thought to myself, ha, good for him. You know, he deserves it. And and everything but as years have gone by years later have gone by it turns out that that DUI was bullshit and it turned out that uh it was just the officer um basically trying to do anything he could to make sure Kurt didn't have a career and get him fired because he knew you know who he was and and didn't like him which is pretty disgusting and yeah and yeah so the DUI charges were they were fake Kurt did the sobriety tests and everything, and he, he was clear. He didn't have anything in his system. So, yeah, that's disgusting. But because not all the information was to the public right away, uh, Roush decided, hey, I'm going to let him go early. He was going to let go at the end of the 2005 season anyways, but he they let him go two weeks early, and Kenny Wallace took the ride and basically did nothing with that car. So then 2006 came around, and there was... Uh, you know, he won at Bristol. I remember Matt Kenseth in, his, in the Dale Jr. download saying, um, uh, Kurt Busch won the race and he ran over Dale Jarrett, like, which is bullshit. That didn't happen. Kurt never ended up getting to Dale Jarrett, which was a lap car. So Kenseth thinking that, like, Kurt just, like, plowed through everyone is ridiculous and a lie and just a classic case of misremembering. But he didn't really do too much past that. And really... From that time span, 2007 to 2011, he was kind of just 
kind of like a nuclear explosion. I mean, he was always just angry. His radio meltdowns were both the funniest and kind of the saddest things ever just because he really had something wrong. He really had something wrong with him. And he was just very, very just angry. I guess you could say passionate, but he was very angry. And it just fueled my hatred for him more and more. Uh, 2011 came around, everything with him and the Jimmy Johnson situation. Um, I, I Most of that, I don't even really think Kurt did anything wrong. There was beef between him and Kurt because Kurt raced Jimmy hard at Pocono, which was ridiculous that Jimmy would even be upset about it. Then we got the whole Richmond thing, and Jimmy got Kurt back for something. and um, But Jimmy wrecked himself, which was embarrassing. But that, that, was, just, that was just funny. Uh, Kurt and the media was just a- having an attitude because um, the media person was saying something that was true, like something that actually had happened, and Kurt just ignored it and just ripped the paper. And high. we all we all remember that. Uh, 2011 at Homestead, he has a meltdown. He uh, blows up early in the race. He gets interviewed by uh, Jerry Punch, and we get there's that infamous like fan camera like video where he's just kind of being a bitch to everyone around him. Uh, cursing at people and just, just having a shit attitude and because of that and probably because of everything else with just his radio meltdowns and just his attitude he uh Penske lets him go at the end of 2011 season he didn't have a ride for 2012 until James Finch took him up uh, in the 51 car and this was kind of the beginning of Kurt's redemption even though it started off in probably the most miserable ways he really didn't run well yeah there was an infamous radio meltdown at Darlington, which is probably the biggest rage I've ever heard of Kurt or really anyone on the radio in my lifetime watching NASCAR. And it turned out, uh, a lot of this information I'm kind of uh, regurgitating is from the Outlaw documentary that came out late 2012. It was like a 45-minute special. It's a really good one to really get an insight on Kurt, some of these allegations that happened to him during the time period up till 2012 to really get you a bit of a context on everything. And that documentary was really the big turning point for me to appreciating Kirk because a lot of my hatred was misguided. And it was interesting to kind of see this. And it opened my eyes. It opened my eyes a lot. A little bit. It, it, was, it was the start. Um, but yeah, 2012 Darlington, um, a lot of that was um, really... Well, the reason why Kurt was so mad on Pit Row is because... Um, one of Ryan Newman's pit crew, they thought he intentionally was like maliciously hitting Newman, but it wasn't just a genuine accident. And there was another in- incident prior, or at least early in the race, where Kurt left pit road and Newman's pit crew thought they were trying to run him over. Again, can't blame him because in 2007, right, it was probably 2008 with, with Kurt and Tony Stewart, Kurt barreled down pit road and door slammed Tony with her pit crew were there. That was stupid. That was dangerous. And that's disgusting. I hated it back then, hated it now, but can't blame them for assuming that because he, he's done stuff like that before. But then one of the pit crew members brought Kurt's wife into it, which was unnecessary, and then Kurt just freaked out. And things continue throughout the middle portion of the year. We have the infamous uh, quote after a nationwide race in 2012 at Dover, where Bob Pro- or Kurt was on probation. Bob Progress asked him a question, and Kurt said he's... Uh, it refrains him from being the shit out of him because he's on probation. It was just bad. Just continue to do bad, stupid shit. And um, 2012 Talladega was kind of the, I don't know if it was a tipping point, but it was just another one. But this was a moment where Kurt, for the first time in his career, changed. Like he actually just, he approached the situation in a different light. He handled the media stuff way better than he's ever had before, and it was a start. It was his last race with James with the, with the Finch car, and um, I remember watching it live on TV, not understanding much of the context, but he got into a wreck. His car was done. Kurt got back in the car after he was out, said that he could still run it. He didn't have his helmet on, so he runs in, and goes, and there was like the the AMR like safety equipment like bag or something on top of the car and that like falls off and NASCAR is telling Kurt to park it but Kurt doesn't have his helmet on 
and then his car eventually runs out of gas and he stops at turn three. But it does look like as if he would it was yielded to NASCAR's claims. So there was a whole bunch of shit with that. And how Kurt handled it, I remember watching it live, I was impressed. I was like, hey, Kurt handled that situation really good. And it was the start. It was the first start of Kurt changing as a person. And then it was it was something. Now, obviously, when I first saw it, you know, just like, okay, it's just one instance of him doing something right. He's got to, he's got to, you know, he's got to do more of that. And he did. 2013 with Richmond, how Kurt and Stewart, they got into it, how Kurt handled that situation. It was a different attitude in how he was handling that. And it was like, okay, that's a start. 2014 Martinsville, how he handled all that with him and Brad and how ESPN was trying to, like, bait him into, you know, trying to start shit with them. And Kurt just completely ignored it. So I was like, all right, that's some good stuff. That's visible change. And then as the years have gone on, it just continued to happen again and again. And my respect for him just grew more and more. And by, you know, 2015 he hits another roadblock and it's another hellacious one another really disgusting one uh before the Daytona 500 uh his then girlfriend accused him of assaulting her and Kirk gets ejected from NASCAR and basically gets like indefinitely suspended so he's for the second time in his career Kurt hits a, a rock bottom or it gets you know gets something thrown at him and it turns out that is that that girlfriend of his was insane like schizophrenic and just there was no claims there was nothing to base the claim I was just baseless so that sucked a couple weeks came by we go to auto club Kurt I don't that's that's Kurt's first race back or second one but it was very it was within this like it was it was not too long after he came back auto club was up and Kurt was gonna win that race and then there was a bullshit yellow that didn't need to happen and it systematically based it basically screwed Kurt's race, and I think this was this was NASCAR attempting to uh, kind of fix the race a little bit just to um, not have Kurt win because it would be bad publicity for a driver that just had all these charges and accusations coming back and, and winning. I, I think it would be bad. So I think NASCAR tried their best to make sure they could find any excuse to throw a yellow and screw that up. So that was disgusting. Um, that's one among like 6,000 instances of NASCAR doing something that really pisses me off. Um, he, a couple weeks later, he wins at Richmond. It's a great, it's another amazing redemption story. And even by 2015, this man has gone through so much shit. And by 2015, I guess you could say by 2014, he's back in that top ride. And this is where the story, I think, hits really hard. And I was, I'm, I'm going to sit up in my chair because this is an important point to make. After 2011... Kirk got humbled in the most realistic way possible. He lost his top tier ride. He had to struggle to get back into a top tier competitive ride. He was with James Finch with that car which junk. 2013, he finally was his furniture row, which was definitely a much better ride. And then 2014, three years later, he finally gets back into a top tier competitive ride. Because Stuart Haas in 2014 was, was a top tier team. And Kurt was back. He made that full circle. And what pisses me off to this day is how Kirk got punished so hardcore. But yet Kyle Larson, who basically disparaged an entire race of people, can just come back in a few months, well, not in a few months, but, uh, well, he was, like, reinstated, like, six or seven months later. But, yeah. But it's basically NASCAR threw out all morals just because, oh, Larson is a generational talent and Hendrick wanted him. And I think it's disgusting because Larson doesn't really have much of a redemption arc. And it's, and it's really bullshit that Kirk gets punished so hardcore for just being an asshole. For being an asshole. I feel like disparaging a race of people is way worse than being an asshole. That's just my take. I don't know. That's just something about that rose me the wrong way and it bothers me. But Kirk's redemption is inspiring because again like I said he got humbled in the most brutal real world way possible and had to pay the consequences for his actions not many drivers have to reap what they sow with their actions and lose a top two ride struggle for a while come back to a top two ride and win again that doesn't happen 
sometimes just piece of shit people just always stay in that top ride. They never have a redemption. They never change. They just stay the same, and it's disgusting. Kurt is one of those few magical, lucky people to climb back up from the pits of hell. I'm not going to count Larson, because that's not even close. But that was incredible. Watching that live, watching that as it happened, me going from someone that hated him so much to turning that around, he had a real-life heel turn, and it was amazing to witness. And I'm so happy I was able to watch him on track all those years rooting for him. 2016, I was at Pocono. He won when I was at Pocono. I never imagined I would even see the day that would happen. I was at Pocono in 2014 where Dale Jr. won. That was my favorite driver. Car by 2016 was my favorite driver for a couple of years. I never thought I would be be able to witness that, and I got to witness that. That is, honestly, as as being a fan of those two drivers and Truex, that, that's like almost almost all that you can really ask for is going to a race and seeing your driver win in person. I didn't get to see it with Truex, but two of the three is not bad odds. And you know, 2017 comes around, he wins the Daytona 500. And that's like the, the complete full circle of his career. Now, I don't really like the 2017 500. It's a shit show. It was a mess. But in terms of the storyline, the driver that won, his career, his redemption, it's all but perfect. By 2017, he basically has completed all the big things. I mean, technically not a Southern 500 or, or a Brickyard. But I think most people usually kind of put the 500 above those in terms of like prestige level. So, yeah, by 2017, he really accomplishes everything. And then 2018, his 30th career win happens at Bristol, where he got his first career win. Another storybook ending. And by 2018, he's out of the rise third Haas. And again, has to cut and grind to come back. Not really come back, but he loses the top tier ride again. For the second time. This time, not really any because of controversy. It was maybe because of more like sponsors. I don't really know the whole reason why, but... It was on much, at least left on much more better terms than he did in 2011. But, yeah, and 2019 comes around, and he outperforms the shit out of that one car. I was impressed. Jay McMurray did not next to nothing, really, in that, that one car the last couple years. And I just kind of thought, you know, it's just that car. But Kurt proved that the car is worth something. Kurt was able to run decently in that car. He was able to get wins in those times he was with that team. And I think the other thing that annoys me too is, I um, mean, in, in uh, this was a year, this is like a video from like years ago now, I think. Um, Iceberg made a video talking about Kurt. I think this, this might have been after Pocono or the 2022 Pocono, but I'm not really sure. But he was saying since 2018, Kurt's stats have dropped, which I think is, it's true. But I think the context is important. I think it's bullshit to use this as an, as an argument because Kurt went from a Stuart Haas ride, which is a top tier ride in 2018, to a like an A tier ride to like a B B minus B tier team. Like no shit. His stats are gonna drop compared to twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen. He's just he's not with a better team. It's like expecting and this is like an extreme example, but this is like expecting Clint Boyer to have a comparative season to how to his when he, when Clint Boyer went to that fifth that fifteen car in 2016 and expect Boyer to perform similarly to his season in 2015. It's I know it's an extreme example, but it's like, what do you expect? And in 2019, 2020, Kurt had relatively similar stats. I think 2021, it was a slight dip. And that could be the beginning of Kurt's decline is really around 2021. And I was really impressed. Kurt was able to get wins in that car. And Kurt was kind of the story of, when you look at his career, how many cars was he with? How many teams was he was he with? And he made better. I mean, Fern Chiro, I mean, he when he went there, he surpassed all the previous stats of that 78 car. Like, he was able to prove that car is worth something when you have, a like, a you know cal like an A-caliber driver. And it was impressive. I Especially being in that one car. I never imagined Kurt really to do much of anything in that car, and he was able to, you know, get three wins and make the playoffs every year. Um I never imagined that with that one car. Uh, 2022 comes around, and Kurt, again, 
talent. I wouldn't say he's back, but he's back with a stronger team than what I would think would get an Essie would be at the end of 2021. You know, he's basically a Gibbs car now, uh, like a satellite Gibbs car, but he basically he's back in a what I would consider a top tier ride. And, you know, things were, he was able to get a win at Kansas and he, you know, he did all right. And, yeah, I, that was really the first year I thought, you know, he wasn't doing as well. But he is with the new team. These cars are a lot, I wouldn't say tougher, but it feels a lot more competitive with this type of car. And Kurt was kind of having a, a definitely a below average season. But he was able to get a win at Kansas. And, you know, there was a couple of races where he ran pretty well. And I'll never forget his last race at uh, New Hampshire. He was battling with uh, for Lee with Chase Elliott, and he fought him off for a good while, and it was really fucking cool to see Kurt battling the defending champion. Well, not defending champion, but a former champion. It was just cool. It was cool to win that Kurt ran well, and it was a nice, solid race to what would then be his last career race. And uh, then Pocono comes around. He gets into a crash, and he's out. And what would then be his the, the, the crash to end his career? And it really fucking sucks. Uh, 2022, he announced that he wasn't running the rest of the season. He was missing the playoffs. But then, obviously, today he announced his retirement. And this is where I'm going to go into my rant because the, the, the bit of me reflecting on everything is kind of done. And we're going to get into the rant portion. So let me get into this real quick because I'll make, I'll make one statement here and I'm going to back this up because I don't want to be saying baseless things without at least showing some fucking evidence. But Kurt's retirement and that crash and everything that transpired with it is a fucking tragedy. It is a goddamn shame his career ended in that way. A driver that has gone through so much redemption, so much trials and tribulations, and to get fucking ended because this car was just pushed out the fucking door when safety was a concern for months, if not years. And it gets ended of this bullshit. A wreck that really shouldn't have ended a fucking career. But because the ass end of this car is so stiff, it just rattles people's brains and it's horse shit. And that is one thing I can simply not forgive NASCAR for. And this isn't just a, oh, you know, a freak accident. We've had freak accidents in the history of the sport where just crazy shit happens. But this was one thousand percent avoidable i'm gonna bring up shit i'm going to this this is a twitter thread made by nascar man he made this thread back in august 30th 2022 so this is not up to date but we could just browse through this because it was evident that this car had fucking problems with safety so it says, throughout 2022, a major topic discussion with the moderate uh, impacts and crashes have felt for the drivers, making a thread to collect the comments of drivers and industry members in one place. So we have this. In March 2020, William Byron had a right rear impact testing the next-gen car, Fontana. In May 2021, DBC discussed the wreck with uh, Chase Rice. We've heard, and this is a quote, we've heard through the Great Prime some confirmations about William's crash and the force that he took in that wreck. And then we have this, which was at uh, Atlanta. After a last, lap, a last lap crash at Atlanta, Bob Wallace called the hit the hardest of his career, surpassing his violent wreck at Pocono in 2018. And this quote was, this was the hardest hit I've had. I think that was harder than Pocono. Then another one, after a last lap, a lap crash at Talladega, Bob Wallace implied Team Rayo that that crash was the hardest than he suffered at Atlanta. Uh, here's uh, P1. I don't even know if it could take any more hits like that. So it's evident. Drivers had concerns. And this was so e fucking evident. But NASCAR instead just thought, hey, we can... We, and, and, and this is a fucking crackpot theory. I, I might be wrong. But it just it comes off to me that NASCAR just thought, hey, we can save some money by not making it as fucking safe. So we can save our fucking wallets, but the drivers are going to have to suffer. They prioritized saving fucking money than prioritizing 
the safety, health, and life of a fucking driver. And that is disgusting. That pisses me off. Because a lot of these crashes weren't something that should be super fucking severe. We've seen the Alex Bowman one. He got a concussion off a bitch boy hit off turn four. And that's not a knock at Bo uh, Bowman being, you know, a wimp or anything. It's just how pathetically unbrittle the back end of these cars were. There was a thing in 2022 at Martinsville where Tyler Reddick had to park his fucking car because he got bumped at Martinsville. That bump was so severe, it gave him headaches or nausea. That is unacceptable. I'm sorry. That is inexcusable. That should cause that type of pain. It's, it's gross. So here's another one. Chris Rebell had a crash. They all stories uh, and testing a Pocono. Both of them were from the outside, but does does not look like a hard impact. But uh, but it absolutely felt harder than any car he backed into the wall. So yeah, another instance. We had again comic. How many instances of this? And NASCAR was just fucking lackadaisical, fucking lazy on it to not fix this. And instead, took their sweet ass time and kind of like in 2001. But to a lesser extreme, just waited for tragedy to strike before they made a change. And even in 2001, they still fucking waited till Blaze Alexander to make the fucking Haas like or the Haas device like fully mandated. It took it took so much. It's it's not exact. I want to make that proud. I'm not saying it's exactly one to one. But this situation with the safety of these cars, it had to take fucking people getting concussed, people getting injured, and a driver basically had to have their career ended short because. They were lazy on fixing these fucking problems. And it's disgusting. And this thread just goes on. There was a driver saying it was the hardest crash they had in their life. It was horrible and it hurt really bad. These cars, they hit harder than ever. They hit really, really hard. They're super solid and it hurts. So basically it's like all the impact that they would take just goes right to the fucking body. And it's just, it pisses me off because this is so fucking avoidable. This should have never happened. And it drives me fucking nuts. And of all people, it had to happen to Kurt, who did not deserve this. He did not deserve to end his career in, in not his terms. And it drives, it's, it's just makes me so mad. And it's just not fucking fair. Even though I think there was an article saying like 2023 was going to be Kurt's last season anyways. And I would have been fine with that. There was already rumors and speculation. Even as early, there was like a, like a video that Kurt made in like 2020. That almost kind of implied that he was going to retire, but it, it really wasn't. But people are already thinking, even by 2020, like, it wouldn't be surprised if he retired pretty soon. I'm fine with that. And uh, how much more Kurt would have done in the next year and a half? I don't know, because by that point, his career was mostly completed. I'm just upset at the fact that he couldn't end it on his terms. And in the way that it happened, that drives me fucking nuts. And I'm sorry, this shit I cannot forgive. People wonder, like, oh, you're so mad about that. Oh, get over it. Well, wait till it happens to your fucking favorite driver. I had to deal with that shit with Dale Jr. And it sucked. But that's not because the cars weren't safe. Because Dale Trigger had multiple incidents before there was even safer barriers and everything. That's unavoidable. That stuff I can't even get mad at. That that Dale Jr. eventually got like you know got into an, an on track incident that reignited an old concussion that he had from multiple different ones. Because he had like multiple different ones throughout his career. There was from like two thousand two at Auto Club, two thousand three at Dover. Uh, there was ones in, like Talladega 2012, but like even by that point, he already had two concussions. I, I guess I guess technically there was one major one that he had before Secret Barriers was a thing. I don't I don't know. I don't know if 2003 was one or not. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But I but I've already had to go through with this, even though that was that's a different circumstance, different context. But yeah, um, and then obviously uh, that, uh, but then uh, this also says. Uh, it was said his injuries were com a culmination of several, of several hard hits at Atlanta, Darlington, Atlanta. I don't know why it's Atlanta twice yet, because he didn't get in a record in the first lap. So I don't really know where the OI lands here twice. But, yeah, just so much. Just so much fucking shit. And it's how, I mean, even now, in these hits, they're not even that fucking severe. We haven't even experienced an Austin Dillon type crash from like 2015 in this type of car can this car even su sustain or keep a driver alive in that type of situation i don't know but these are 
very, very light incidences. And drivers are having this type of problem. I mean, we see a Talladega uh, with the Ryan Priest, Kyle Larson thing where Priest hit Larson's passenger side and the entire, like, roll cage, like, like fell off. And there's, like, just a gaping, like, not gate. I guess it is a gaping hole, but there's a gaping hole in the fucking side of his car. That's disgusting. It's inexcusable that the car falls apart like that. And that's not even... And that's the thing, like, what's it going to take? Is Are we going to have to go through a fucking tragedy? Like, I don't want to be sitting here making and, and being like, you know, wanting this to happen. That's not the fucking point. But I'm just going to be real. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. I'm just going to be blunt and real to the point. What is it going to take? Are we going to have to have a driver fucking die for shit to change again? Is that really what it's going to have to take? And even then... It still takes time to f put these parts in or fix them. It took multiple months just to replace stuff. Like in Harvick, this isn't even like a thing like, oh, it's normal. That takes a long time to, you know, replace things or improve things. Harvick even said back in the day, when if, if something was wrong with the car in terms of a safety mechanism, they would fix it pretty, they would, you know, get on that really fast. They wouldn't have to wait four to six months. It just bothers me. I don't know. It's just, I'm just... I'm so fucking upset. And I don't want to be coming at this from, like, a 100%, you know, fanboy cap on, like, hating it. I'm showing fucking evidence. I'm showing things that happened from multiple drivers saying that this car has had problems. And that this was, un you know, 100% avoidable and preventable. And it sucks that Kurt had to be a martyr for this fucking shit. And that pisses me off. And I cannot fucking forgive that. There's, you know, I, I, there, I got one message... A long time ago, it's like, oh, well, it could be Kurt's multiple instances that he's had throughout his career. Well, I've never seen anything, unless not that I'm aware of, of those incidences causing a concussion. Maybe he's had a secret one that I never knew about. I don't know. I, I really don't know. But he's gone through way worse wrecks. Even Richmond 2021, where he hit the wall like Jerry Nadeau style. He was, I, I guess, fine. But I don't know. I, there's no evidence that even supports the fact that those instances have concussed him. But whatever instance they got in 2022, it apparently has. I don't know. It's just, I can't even use that as an, as an argument or excuse. But even so, these cars are just objectively, at least at this point in time, I don't know if they're much better now than they were back then. But this should not have fucking come out in the state that it did. It did not fucking deserve to be ready in 2022 it needed more time in the oven and it's disgusting and in terms of of safety now we could talk, we could discuss about racing in some aspects it's better some aspects it's worse it's kind of like the inverse of what the gen 6 problems were which uh, gen 6 was like uh it was good at road courses and short tracks but it was bad at um mile and a half and it, it, it the gen 7 it now is you know it's good a mile and a half, but sucks at road courses and short tracks. That's like sort of like it's it's an inverse. It's weird, but one thing I don't think anyone should have a debate on or should question is is that in terms of safety, this is a fucking failure, and that is gross. With all the technology, all the resources, all of past history, that should not happen. We should not be in a situation where the Gen Four car. Pre, I mean, like by like 2004, like a Gen 4 car in 2004 should be safer than a car now. Like, why are we 20 plus years behind safety? It doesn't make sense. It's just, it should not have been released in this state, and it pisses me off. But even another one, um, uh, the, the DBC just got if the hit is not massive, the driver gets the brunt of force. If the hit is hard enough to actually move the barriers, the dash shows. That it's not as hard on driver. As weird as it made sound, it hurts the driver. So they're not gonna face an injury. Harvick says on uh, August sixth, every time I hit something, it's a lot harsher than any hit I took in any of the other cars. Now, for context, Harvick's been around since 2001, so that's more severe than the car tomorrow, the Gen Four, uh, and but before. 2001 when the Haas was Haas device was like mandated I don't I don't know but for him to say that this is like the hardest he's had hits in his entire career is pretty fucking telling 
So again, another instance where a driver says that these hits are really hard. Um, Ty gives a Watkins Glen. It felt like it was a pretty hard hit for as soft as it was. So hopefully we can figure it out how to make things softer and pressure the lives, or preserve the lives of the drivers. I feel like that's the most important thing. I feel like we're seeing it from everybody. Again, just multiple instances, multiple instances, like just before the season, before 2022 season happened and, and during it. It's happened so many times, so many instances. Like, why was this fucking released in the way that it was? Um, Denny Hamlin says after his Daytona crash, that was certainly the first real big hit he's had in the car. Everything they've been telling us, all the drivers, is all true. It's legit. So this isn't even me speculating that, oh, these cars may not be. No, we are getting drivers, multiple different drivers, saying that these hits are way harder than before. No matter the hit, no matter the context, it's harder than before. That's a problem. And it sucks. How many, like, it just, once I, when I saw this story, it was just like, it was comical because it was just so many. There's just so many instances. Bubba Wallace mentions it. Uh, Christopher Bell mentions it. Um, audio from Denny Hamlin's crash as he reacted to pain following uh, Hamlin announced, uh, announced that he would uh, miss Darling Tank's finger race to his soreness in his neck. Uh, Noah Gregson, 2022. No matter how I feel about him, he said that he really didn't even want to go all out. In, in, in those cup races because he wanted to worry about his Xfinity championship and he really didn't trust these cars. Can't blame him. And look what happened in 2023. He gets hurt for a wreck that really should not have injured him in that state. But yeah, just it's so many instances of, of reports and everything. Here's the Gregson one. He'll say, uh, I'll go risk whatever, whatever it is. It's not worth the thought of wrecking the Xfinity car. The cup car, you race at 90% because the hits are so hard. So, yeah, it's just... Um, when he... Uh, Alex Bowman called his crash at Texas the hardest he's crashed anything in his entire fucking life. I'm going to make an edit here. But I really want to just kind of show this because... This is fucking ridiculous. So, let me find it real quick. All right, here's the Bowman crash. I really want to... I really want to showcase this because it's important to know how pitiful this wreck was and how bad the safety of these cars were on the back end that this tap would cause Alex Bowman to be concussed. What What is that? That is so pitifully tame. It just drives me up the fucking wall. But yeah, the hardest hit he's had in his entire life, that hit, should not be like that. That is wrong. How this failed, or how this went through testing, and this, this to be okay, is mind-boggling. Another frustrating thing is, too, is Kurt was one of those test drivers for these cars really early on. I remember he was one of the few that were testing next-gen cars to get, like, input and everything. So, Kurt didn't ask for a solid in testing these cars out, and look what it got him. Now, who knows what Kurt said. I don't know if Kurt would even know of the safety of the cars or, or, or what, but he was one that was testing them, and that's what happened. You know, he gets fucked over in the, just in such a wrong way. I don't know, but... And that's all from this thread. But multiple incidences, multiple cases throughout the whole 2022 season, even before 2022 season began, there was reports as early as March of 20 fucking 20. Two years before that car came out. Almost two years. Exactly one year, 11 months. And that just drives... It's just fucking horseshit. And it pisses me off. And this is why... I don't... I Shit like this makes me just not want to watch an Asker anymore. And I'm honestly not really going to be watching it for the fucking future. Uh, well, not for the future. But at least for this year. This is maybe my last fucking year. Honestly, because... Um, I'm not, I don't know if I want to make an update video. But I'll let you know in this video. I found a job, and I have to work weekends, so more likely, about 100% of the time, I'm going to be missing cup races, which, that doesn't really bother me too much anymore, because, especially with this announcement, uh, this piss this just really cements that, why would I want to come back to the sport after how they fucking treated Kurt? And Shrex is maybe like the last thread of those drivers I, I still like. Most of the field, I really don't care about. So, um... Yeah, and honestly, I I, I kind of feel at peace knowing that, you know, I, I I won't have to watch these races anymore, and it feels weird to not watch to watch these races and not have anyone root for because then what what is the point? 
and I feel good. I feel good. I kind of feel good about it. Um, but this was kind of like a, a cementing moment of, you know, things gotta change. And if that if that's just a me thing that just is just fed up with it, I, maybe it is. I don't know. But I'm I'm okay with that. Um, there's, for all we know, we can get some stupid fucking weird Daytona that gets puts the random like 25th person in points in the chase playoffs, and that knocks out Bubba Wallace or Ty Gibbs or someone else that probably deserves that spot. And it'd just be stupid. We'll just add more icing to the cake of this shit. Uh, situation. I can't even say shit season because this year's been mostly okay, uh, except for the road course, which a lot of that's been kind of like the any any road course is just very average. Um, Watkins Land was shit. Michigan was frustrating. Um, just it, yeah, I don't know. But no matter how, as much good faith as those mile and a half races get, it's all in the service of a shit p- fucking championship format. Where forty percent of the field or forty five percent of the field make to make the playoffs, sixteen drivers out of a thirty six full time field is stupid. It should be down to ten, cut out the win and you're in, and then go from there. Then, then you know what? Maybe maybe you'll get something. Rays are gonna probably drop anyways if Chase has a win, so that's gonna be another just funny thing to look at. But I'm all but done. I'm all, I mean I'm not gonna say I can't sit here and say I'm like I'm definitively done, but I'm like ninety percent ninety five percent done, giving a shit about NASCAR anymore. And I kind of feel at peace with that. And today it kind of like cemented it. Because how this whole Kurt situation is bullshit. And it's wrong. And I'm just not a fan of how this all went. And it was so provoid- preventable and avoidable. This should not have happened in the manner he did. He should have been able to end his career on his own terms. And and it's just it just really bothers me. And it's wrong that it happens to this driver. Who really does not deserve this type of shit. And then you can be like, oh, that's the right thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, Bobby Allison fucking got his career destroyed. And it wasn't fair. Yeah, I know. No shit. Racing's not fair. I lived it. I watched I watched Dale Earnhardt die. Yeah, it's not, it, it's not fucking fair sometimes. But in this case, in this day and age, this was so fucking preventable and avoidable. And how they botched the shit of this car so badly with how this launched is gross. And should not have been released. And should not have been raceable. In, in this state I would have been fine with the, the, with you know one more year of the Gen 6 just if we can get these cars to be better because the safety of these drivers should be fucking paramount and wrecks like that should not destroy people's fucking careers I'm sorry I'm just I'm just done that's my thoughts on the whole situation this might be like the longest I might be the biggest Kurt Simp fanboy on the fucking platform to make a 40 plus minute video but God damn it, I cared about this person. I, I, He meant a lot to me. And there's not many drivers I really feel that way towards. It's really just Kurt, Dale Jr., and Shrek. Those are maybe the big three. I guess Mark Martin, too. Mark Martin's, like, up there as well. But there's not many. I mean, there, that's, that's barely a handful of drivers I really cared about over the years. That, that really got me excited when they ran well or I was rooting for. I don't really get that too much. I mean, I still get it with Shrek. So it's been, it's been cool with that. But he really should be like the champion this year but i'm sure the this this format will fuck him over somehow some way to and that'll just really really accentuate all the more reason why not be investing in this fucking sport if you know the best driver all year just doesn't win because of one race winner take all shit which that should never have been a thing from the beginning it was stupid if they want to do a one race winner take all have all their playoff points be added into that last race and then, you know, you add in their playoff points and everything like usual, or, you know, stage points, and then go from there. I think that would be a little more fairer to make the entire season matter. So now when you get into the Final Four, just everyone's just even. That's bullshit. One race winner take all is stupid. It's always been stupid. But if they do that specifically with the you know, I don't know. I'm done. I'm getting, off to, I'm, I'm getting off topic. But that's all my thoughts on the situation. I'm about to watch this cup race. It'll, this video will probably be uploaded as the cup race is going on. So... Will there be a race review? Depends on some stoop happens, but I don't know. That's my thoughts on the Kurt situation. And I do want to preference. Uh, this is so late in the video. I don't know if it, no one's going to be watching, but um, I also want to preference that. Oh, well, you know, you shouldn't be surprised that he's done. Well, I'm not surprised. I was, I was fearing it, hoping it wasn't going to be a thing, but when they announced that, they were gonna have a press conference this this afternoon. I was like, yeah, it's it's over. It's fucking over. They wouldn't be make do making all this hoopla for for him coming back. 
So yeah, I, once I heard that, it's like, yeah, it's fucking, it's done. My fears came true. I'm not fucking sitting here shocked. I just couldn't believe it. Like, it's, it was almost fucking expected. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm done. Um, see you later. I wish there was a happy ending to all this. I wish, uh, I wish there was something good to be taken out of it. Um, Kurt did say he was dealing with arthritis and gout. So, like, I knew 2023. I, like, I knew his time was nearing. But not in this manner. Nobody wanted this to happen. And it sucks. This just fucking sucks. Like I said, there was, like, an article that said, like, 2023 was going to be his last year anyway. And that would have been cool to have him have one more year. Just to, have, you know, Richard Petty got to end his career. As embarrassing as the last, like, five or so years of his career was, Dale Jr. got to end his career. Um, Tony Stewart was able to do it. Well, he got injured, but at least he was able to have a, a final season of some capacity. Um, just sucks. So, I don't know. I'm done. Thanks for listening. Sorry for all the rambling. Um, yeah, I'm done. Um, see you later.